What is going on guys? So I am back in good old Texas. Other than the fact that it is god awful hot. <laughs> like it is so hot. It's like 7.30 p.m. right now and the sun just beating down on you. So anyway, so I'm back here in Texas and uh, yeah, so for today we're going to be building something. It's a pretty simple system actually. It's going to consist of a box, a sponge filter, some guppy grass, a heater, and about four fish. So stay tuned. We're going to pick up six female guppies, possibly, or whatever they have in here. They may only have four. What's going on, guys? So today we are back for another video, and today's video, we are actually going to be building a guppy breeding tank, if you will. So what we're going to need for that, a plastic tub. We're going to need an aerator with an air stone, half inch pipe. We need some three quarter inch pipe. We need a submersible heater that will keep the temperature of the water between 78 and 82 degrees. Some odd and in PVC pieces, which I'll show you what we're going to do with that, as well as some sponges for a sponge filter. Now, I will show you where I got these sponges and how we're gonna build this sponge filter as a part of this video. We also need guppy grass, which we have in the 100 gallon. Everybody was talking about getting rid of that, and here's what's gonna happen with it. What we also need is that right there, female guppies. So the female guppies have been acclimating in here. The males have paid a ton of attention to them, so we're gonna move those ladies here in just a minute, and then we're gonna take some of these really pretty male cobra guppies, and they're gonna go into the breeding tank with them. First, we gotta get everything set up. So, let's get to work on that. Now, now, since the female guppies have already been acclimated to the 100 gallon tank water, we're gonna go ahead and use that to fill our guppy breeding tank with. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this up right next to where the theme tank is and the glow tank. So let's get this going here. Go ahead and plug in the heater. Let's go ahead and get these fish in here. Okay, so we now have enough water in the tank. We have the female guppies in the tank. We need to now build the sponge filter. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and get the guppy grass in here. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and build the sponge filter. All right, guys, so we are going to build a homemade sponge filter. And to start with that, I am doing this with a half inch PVC. Really, the reason for that is, is the Airstone. It's a two pack of Airstones that I bought at Walmart. The packaging looks like this. So it's just their standard aquaculture brand, two pack of Airstones. So the reason I went with a half inch is it will give me enough aeration from a half inch or enough flow from a half inch that that's all I need. But the reason for this is, is because you want this air stone to fit very, very tightly into the end of this pipe. So if you notice here, it fits perfectly in there. It's a very tight fit, and I'll explain to you on why that's important here in just a little while when we start working on this and putting it together. We're gonna need an air stone. We're gonna need air tubing, which I already have, a half inch piece of PVC pipe, and a sponge. Now, the sponges that I bought, the reason I bought these is it was the only thing I could find locally at the store. I bought these from PetSmart. The reason I bought these is because they are actually already holed out. You notice here with a perfect cut hole they come with a plug in them a sponge plug and then this is full of activated charcoal or activated carbon basically it's for a specific type of filter now the reason i'm using it is because it fits around this half inch pvc pipe perfectly so all i have to do now is just cut the end out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and cut the end where the pipe's trying to come through allowing the pipe to go ahead and protrude through now what we need to do with this two things there's a whole bag of pvc components that i'm going to be using today for the first one what i need is is i need a half inch coupler which is this it just connects two pieces together so i'm going to stick this coupler on here fully make sure that it's tight and then I'm going to slide this sponge about, I don't know, say a half inch up from the end of that coupler, and I'm going to mark this with a marker. It doesn't have to be perfect, just mark it on both ends, like so. Now when I pull this off, you will see that I have a mark here and a mark here. Now what this is for is we now need to drill holes into this particular pipe. 
So how I'm going to do that is with just a drill, I'm going to use a, I'm not sure what size bit this is, about a quarter inch bit. And it, it really doesn't matter. You just need to get some holes into the pipe to allow for airflow. And I will show you why. I'm going to take this coupler back off because I don't need the coupler on there right now. It was really just to be able to mark this. In between these marks, here's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the drill and we're gonna drill holes. Just like that. So now we have holes on one side. Let's go ahead and drill these out on the other sides as well. So we have our holes drilled. Now we wanna clean all this out, all of the excess plastic that's coming out of this. So what we're gonna do is take a piece of sandpaper, just simply put it on here, twist around the holes, gonna take the marks off of it which is fine we just needed the marks just so we knew where to drill our holes get that nice and uh, sanded down so there's no kind of burrs on it and I'm just gonna use this this is just a Torx tool and the only reason I'm using this is because it has a kind of serrated edge on it and this particular size fits in these holes great you don't have to do this but I'm just using it just to break loose all of those plastic shards that are inside because what I don't want to have happen is to have those go into my fish tank as you can see on my finger there it's just breaking them loose and I'll just go across this and do this for each hole and really it kind of just like I said kind of just breaks loose those plastic fragments and allows us to get those out I'm sure there's another tool we could use to get down inside of it and such but it's not that big of a deal we'll get all these holes kind of bored out perfect now here is how this is gonna go together so I'm gonna place my coupler back on here. Now why I'm putting a coupler on here is very simple. With a sponge filter, basically what's gonna have to have happen is we're gonna have to have this piece of PVC pipe stand straight up. The sponge will go onto the pipe as such, slide all the way down over the holes that we just drilled. We want it within the holes. That's why you had the lines marked was to notify you where the holes were. We had the sponge completely over this. This pipe will actually be cut down to about right here. So standing up straight, this needs to be the base. The top of this needs to be cut below the water level. And then we are going to place a elbow at the top to direct water flow out of this pipe. Now, how is the water actually sent out of this pipe? That's how I'm going to show you now. So what we need is now in other videos, um, I'm actually taking this from the king of DIY, I believe, who made this particular type of sponge filter. Now what he did is he took this and he siliconed this to a tile. I'm going to do it a little differently. So what we're going to do today is actually we are going to have this T and inside of this T will be a plug. And now on top of this plug, this plug will actually be glued down. This plug will actually go into the bottom of this, providing a closed end. Now, why is that important? I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Before we move on any further with this piece, let's move in to this. But essentially what we're going to do is I have a clamp. We're going to undo this clamp. I'm going to put these two together just like this. You could probably use PVC glue and it would be a lot easier. I don't have any PVC glue and I'm not going back to the store to buy some. I'm going to take some super glue. And I'm gonna place that super glue right on top of here, like this. Now, the super glue is on top. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it right to the top here. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if it's not, not a big deal. So it's already starting to glue down, like so. Now, we're gonna take this, use this clamp to clamp these guys together to hold, just simply to allow the glue to set. Now, these are, are held together. I'm gonna take this glue and I'm going to put another bead of glue just around the edge just like so. So this should hold just fine. So I'm gonna let this dry and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so the complete list for what we're going to be using for this sponge filter is a piece of half inch PVC. Now, if you notice, I've cut this down. Uh, just a moment ago, I showed you in this video. Put your sponge over where you want it, mark it, and then drill the holes in between the two lines. So I've got this piece. Next thing, what we're going to be using is we are going to have a total of three three quarter inch tees, two three quarter inch elbows, two pieces of three quarter inch pipe that are about 
an inch and a half long. They could be really however long you want it to be based on how you're building this. There is also going to be two pieces of three quarter inch pipe that are about an inch long or maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch long. And four pieces of three quarter inch PVC that are about four and a half inches, five inches long. And we're gonna build this from the ground up. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna build a stand. So starting with a T and one of the four and a half inch to five inch, we're gonna place this in the end like so. We're gonna grab another four and a half inch or five inch piece and we're gonna place it on the other side, giving us this. We're gonna build another one just like this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take the one and a half inch PVC, that's three, or the three quarter inch that is cut down to one and a half inch. We're gonna place that inside of here we're gonna place the other one inside of here. And you wanna make sure that those are fully seated in there all the way down. And then what we will do is we'll take a 90 degree elbow, placing it perpendicular to this stand. We will take the other 90 degree elbow, also placing it perpendicular. So now what we have are these, they look like this. Now what we will do is we will take the last T, we will place the three quarter inch piece into one end, the three quarter inch piece into the other end, like so. This will then come into this here. This side will come into this side here, giving us a stand. You can do this with, like I said, in other videos, people have used pieces of pipe and they have siliconed it to a tile, something to hold it down, to weight it down. I decided to go this route just simply because it was easier to use PVC. Now, I have this that's been sitting here gluing together, which is solid and glued together at this point. All the glue is dry. These pieces should be well together, and they are. What's gonna happen with this? This is completely plugged up in the end, as you can see. That's the whole reason I put these plugs together. I have a three quarter inch on this side. I have a half inch on this side. So the three quarter inch is gonna go into the top here, all the way down inside, just like so. You can push that all the way down in there. So what you have is this at this point. Now, this, piece of pipe will actually go on top of here with a coupler, which I have right here. With this coupler, push that down on top of there to allow me to place the pipe inside of here, like so. What we have now is we have this full on stand. I can now take my sponge. I will slide the sponge down over the top of the hole, like I showed you in the previous segment. Make sure it's completely covering the holes. And what we have left to do is we need to place our air stone. And how we do that is this. I'm gonna take the sponge back off. I'm gonna take this pipe back out of here. So I need to place the air stone inside of this pipe. But before I do, I am going to take a piece of hose, just regular aerator hose, and I'm gonna run it down inside of this pipe all the way to the bottom, out the other end. I'm going to connect my air stone to this hose, and then I'm going to feed this back up in here. Now, what I need to do is I need to make sure that this air stone is all the way up into the pipe, like so, which it is, just like this. And then I'm gonna place my air stone pipe right down on top of this coupler, which basically gives us the hose coming out of the top, the air stone is down inside of here, and we are going to then place our sponge right over the top of this. So we will feed the hose through the hole that we cut in it earlier, slide this all the way down, back down on the pipe, over the holes, and what you have now is you have a sponge filter. Now, what will happen is, is as the air stone, the bubbles from the air rise up out of the top of this pipe, it will actually create suction, drawing water through this pipe, up through the top of the pipe, and basically allowing this sponge right here to be the filter. So, let's go take a look and see how this works. So, what I did is I actually modified this just a little bit, and I took out these 90 degrees that cross, put the cross brace in. Basically, you have the four and a half inch pieces, two of the T's, the little one and a half inch piece, the one T that is connected to the two plugs that I glued together, up into the half inch pipe that we drilled holes in. Now I have this slanted just a little bit and that's just due to the height of it, which is fine, but it's still doing exactly what we needed it to do, which is the air stone is at the bottom, pushing bubbles up into the top of the pipe, through the holes, basically causing suction, allowing for the water to flow through this filter and then up out with the bubble. So it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. We have guppy grass in here and we have a whole school of female guppies. Now, the only thing we have left to do is put some male guppies in here. So let's get that done. Now, let's find the prettiest male guppies we can. Well, some of those are too small. That's a good one. We want this guy. So we 
we got two right here. We need one more. That's a really pretty male right there. Bro, if you only knew what I was trying to catch you for. Here we go. The males and the females are all hanging out. Well, now all we have to do is just wait for them to breed. All right, so it's the next morning. Let's check on these guys real quick. So, we have the pump and the hornwort or guppy grass or whatever it's called. There they all are, the females and the males. They all look good. So we will check back on this. So basically, the breeding cycle for guppies is 21 to 30 days. And guppies are one of the few fish that give birth to, well, I say one of the few, I don't know exactly how many there are, but it's one of the freshwater fish that give birth to live young. They do not lay eggs. So the female guppy will lay around 20 to 30 live young. And those fry will actually then make their way up into this guppy grass to hide. And the reason is, is due to cannibalism. They will eat the babies when they're born. Now, the reason we're using a sponge filter compared to a standard filter is just simply because of the fact that the regular filter has a little too much flow, which will suck the live fry up in here. This will oxygenate the water enough and then, you know, I'll hand clean this water, do water changes and such as needed to keep the water clean. But as of right now, yeah, everything looks good. So let's take a look at the rest of the fish. We haven't seen all the fish in a little over a week because I have been traveling and such. So yeah, let's take a look. So we got the 100 gallon here. Everybody in the 100 gallons looking good. Oh, Zeckley there. And look, there's Billy. You got the Serpe Tetra. You got the Buenos Aires Tetra. The feather fin catfish and the pleco look at how big the pleco is leftover male guppies that are still in the hundred gallon there's another one we'll get some more to put in here uh, but everybody's looking good uh, if you notice i did fill the water back up from the water i took out of here last night to put into the guppy tank but yeah everything in here looks good let's take a look at the glow tank so here's the glow tank. Everything looks good in the glow tank. All the glow tetra look good. Now over to the theme tank with the beta. Oh, wait. Hey, what are you doing? Hi. Hi. <laughs> you dork. <laughs> oh, okay, so here's the beta. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to the beta tank? Where'd all the Minecraft stuff go? Oh, you know what that means? The Minecraft stuff is gone. So that tells me it is time to retheme this tank. So here's your opportunity. Comment below, let me know what you guys think this theme tank should be this time. I know I've heard a lot of different ideas, but this is the official video that you'll have to comment to let me know what we should do. And we'll, we'll definitely make a video of doing that. Right now, nothing in this beta tank. Beta looks good. There's been a water change done. It is ready for something new. So definitely comment below. Let me know what you think that we should do here and we'll retheme this tank again. All right, so we're now heading out outside we being myself and this little dude right here hey 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 so we're heading outside we're gonna take a look at the pond and just see what we have out here we haven't been here in a while let's take a look i know that fanatic came over and did a water change while i was out of town at some point but there are still thousands of tadpoles in here the goldfish and everybody's coming out to eat there are a bunch of little baby goldfish in here Where'd all these come from? There are hundreds of little goldfish in here, little baby goldfish that I have never seen before. There is no way that these goldfish hatched eggs. I mean, I guess. So now I'm overrun with tadpoles and baby goldfish. Awesome. So yeah, anyway, well, everybody in here is looking good. I'm thinking it's time. I promise you guys this, promise you this. It is currently, well, not currently, but at this time frame, like yesterday, I think the high was 107 degrees, which is, what is that? For everybody that's not in the United States, that's like a, what, 43, 42 degrees Celsius. Anyway, it's hot. That's all that matters. So I promise you this, when the weather decides to cool off, we will continue to have this front yard pond, but we're also going to build a much larger backyard pond. How about that? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Yeah, we're, we're definitely 
looking forward to breeding the guppies. We want a lot of guppies actually because we want to do a full guppy tank. I like the way the guppies look, especially when you have a ton of them in there. You know, whatever the safe ratio is to the size of tank that we need, but we uh, we have plans for these guppies. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and you know you guys stay tuned to watch the growth of all these guppies and see what happens. So, with that being said, little Max Robert here has something to say to you guys. If you haven't followed us on Instagram or subscribe to our channel, do that now. What do you do tomorrow, you buddy? Follow me. What? What happens tomorrow? I go back to school. You go back to school? What grade are you going to be in? First. First? How old are you? Six. Six years old. Thanks for always helping me, dude. I really like when you do the videos with me. I think everybody else likes when you do the videos, too. You think so? Yeah? You going to do more videos with me? Yeah? So like Max said, if you haven't followed us on Instagram, you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that now. If you're new to our channel, hey, welcome, thanks. We really appreciate the support. And hey, we will see you next time. And give time. us a thumbs up. If we get 500 thumbs up, we'll make the beta take something else. So what do they Name have to it. do? You have to like the video. And how many likes do, we, do you want? 500. 500, wow, okay. So, you heard Max there. Oh my gosh. Do you see this? Look. That right there. I'm telling you, everything annoying in this world, we're just going to start calling Peggy. Hey Peggy, could you just, just drive down the street a little quieter? Anyway, like little Max said there, 500 likes. That's all we're looking for. 500 likes and we'll retheme the beta tank. So comment below and what do you think the beta tank should be themed as this time? For now, I'm gonna let you guys get back to it because little Max and I have to head over and pick up old Peggy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and we will see you next time.